parents of Reddit, when was the moment that you realized your kid was a butthole? When our 13 year old decided to steal $200 that was hidden in my desk one week before Christmas. He then spent it all in one day on candy, and yelled at us for confiscating what was left of it. He also told us it was our fault for leaving money in the house. To confirm that he is horrible person, he told his mum that he doesn't like seeing anyone else happy which is why he broke his one year old brother's things. Please tell me you made him watch as you pawned his crap one by one until it hit 200. My parents let my brother get away with crap like this without punishment, and not ease a me head with no soul left. My oldest child's birthday falls 6 days after his younger brothers. He did not think that was fair, so he would ask his brother to play with his new toys. His brother always said yes, and then my oldest would proceed to break them, and not let his brother play with his toys on his birthday. When he said that he would let someone starve to death if it meant he didn't have to share his food. When he sucker punched a little girl in the stomach because he wanted her to stop humming. Oh and there was the time he said his mom was molesting him so he could get out of trouble. This was when he was 7. He's now 9. A gentleman. Straight A student and is one of those kids who is annoyingly honest. He also fully understands what happens when you make those accusations. I have two little boys, my oldest recently turned 3, about a week ago we're playing with his Hot Wheels and have the following conversation, mommy, yes baby, our car's big, very big kiddo, cars are wide, they are, they have to fit people and other things in them, cars are fat, I'm laughing at this point, I guess so, mommy, what's up, are you a car, little crap, freaking kid orchestrated that from start to finish. My 6 years old son was playing with a neighbor. She fell from her scooter crying loudly. All the kids are surrounding her in concern and my son picks up her scooter and scoots away with it. I'm 25 and met my best friend in first grade. My first memory of her is watching her push a kid off the top of the jungle gym. Fake cry that it was accidental when a teacher asked her. And then turned to me smiling and saying that wasn't an accident. I hope he dies. My husband got a huge cut on his forehead at work, and was asking if it looked that bad. My 4 year old pipes up, don't worry daddy, your face wasn't very pretty anyway. Jokes on him, he shares jeans. Knowing that his dad is colorblind to red, he just sees it was grey, and draws everything for him in red. Says his favorite color is red and if his dad asks him what color a stop sign is he tells him he doesn't know. Maybe he is also colorblind and thinks grey is his favorite color. My son is too so he's in butthole most of the time. Earlier this week, another toddler approached him to play. My son looked at the boy and then pretended to fall asleep rather than play with him. A few minutes later, the parents of that boy ask my son the name of his baby brother. Son rolls his eyes and says, I don't know, brother James or something. Brother James, regal as frick. She's almost 2 and she curb stomped my face earlier today. I was juicy laying on the ground blowing bubbles and she stands over me and just stomps furiously hard onto my face. That'll teach you. Not a parent, but I have definite worries about my niece. I was watching her last spring while my parents were out of town. She lives with my dad and stepmom. She had just got home and I told her she needed to go to her room and do her homework. Put my parents instructions. She said not only was she not going to do her homework, but if I told her to again, she was going to tell my parents that I hit her. I told her I couldn't believe she would deliberately lie like that. When she looked at me, shrugged, and said so, I get that teenage years are supposed to be awful, but the whole 9 to 11 range is really killing me. My daughter Rachel has serious issues and has been in psych hospitals and residential treatment centers. She's currently home and I'm grateful but it's always difficult with her. The moment I knew we had serious trouble was when she had a meltdown at her younger sister M's birthday party and got sent inside for quiet time. She went to M's room and systematically destroyed every possession she owned. Cut up her clothes and bed sheets with scissors, broke every single toy, stabbed holes in her mattress, keyed all her furniture with scissors and killed their pet fish by taking them out one by one and dumping them on the floor. She took M's American Girl doll, that looked like her, gouged out the eyes and wrote curse words all over it. She was so calm and composed, it I had no idea until Megan came running out to me hysterical, 
When I confronted Rachel, she could give two shoots. Not even the remorse of a kid who has been caught being naughty and know she's going to be punished. I'm happy now. Rachel said like I would be cool with that explanation. Breaking M's things makes me happy. Why? She looked at me like I was stupid. Because I made M cry on her birthday. I knew then we were in for a long road. All these horror stories makes me think my kid actually isn't him butthole. She is just developing survival skills to protect herself from all of your kids. I know these are some intense stories. My kids whine at each other and me sometimes. But at the end of the day they say they love their family, eat their veggies, and show empathy and kindness. I can not trust my 11 year old with the baby. The animals are safe from harm and they are scared of spiders. The worst I get is a meltdown because they can't beat something in a video game. My youngest daughter, who is the sweetest, most princess loving little girl you will ever know, saw her opportunity and fell to the dark side. I was laid up after a severe knee injury on the couch in an immobilizer brace, drugged up and a couch potato. At about 2am she woke up with an alarm, walked out and took all of the fruit snacks to her room. I asked her what she was doing and the only response was pops, these snacks are mine. Go get mom if you're mad right after she moved my crutches. I went right back to sleep. That girl already knows you like the back of her hand. Hilarious. My daughter proved her butthole status twice in one day when she was three. First, my husband and I had borrowed my mother-in-law's brand new Cadillac to pick up my Poe's car from the shop. It was over 100 degrees outside and the humidity was brutal. We had the air conditioning running full blast. We pull up to a stoplight next to a bus stop where a homeless man was sitting. My daughter rolls down the tinted window and yells, Hey mister, it's nice and cool in here. Later that same day, we're sitting at the pharmacy, waiting on a prescription. A man walked up and sat down. He was a good 400 pounds. I see my daughter eyeing him and I'm begging her in my head to keep her little mouth shut. She looks over at him and says, Hi, what's your name I relaxed a little. The man says his name is Bob. Daughter yells out, your big one, Bob. Kids are definitely buttholes. One day I went to make my 2 years old daughter a PB and J sandwich for lunch, leaving both her and my 2 month old son alone in the living room. She was watching TV, while sitting on the couch, and he was laying on a blanket in the floor. When I went back into the living room to get her so she could come eat, she was sitting in the same spot but there was no longer a baby on the blanket. I could faintly hear him crying but it was muffled, like he was under something. Even though he wasn't big enough to roll over, or crawl, I started searching under everything. At the table in the corner, the couch, which was old and had those cloth flaps between the bottom of the couch and the floor. He was nowhere to be found. I asked my 2 years old where's the baby she tears her eyes away from the TV and looks up at me with this super serious look on her face blinks those big blue eyes at me at least twice and says what baby. After about 30 more seconds of searching for him, which felt like an hour. I found him behind the couch. The flap on the back of the couch had flipped back down and so I couldn't see him just by looking under the couch. I actually had to move the couch out, away from the wall, to get to him because he was in the corner behind the couch. There was no way she could have picked him up and dropped him behind it. The only thing I have ever been able to figure out was she must have rolled him like a bowling ball under the couch. I didn't leave those two alone in the same room again until he was about 3 and could tell on her. That sounds like something out of a horror movie, jeez. When my daughter was 6 we moved to the country. While standing in the office a friendly little girl approached her saying look I lost her teeth my daughter glanced back over her shoulder. Cut her eyes forward like a bee and coldly replied you lost a tooth. Education. B. Go get you some. Our 3 and 4 year olds are walking in front of us from the car across the cement parking lot of Barnes and Noble. Our 4 year old positions herself behind her brother with her arms bent. She then brusquely extends her arms, flinging him face first into the cement. She immediately turns to us and proclaims it was an accident. I did it on purpose. One day my son was playing with his grandmother when he came up with the great idea to play Sleeping Beauty. He told my mom to play Prince first while he pretended to sleep. My mom pretended to ride a horse to him and kissed him on the cheek. My son woke up and they switched roles. My son then rode his pretend horse around the house a few times and did a couple laps around my mom. 
My mom eventually asked when he was going to save her. He looked at her and said with a straight face, I'm looking for a sleeping beauty, not an old woman. Not my kid but my mom said I was very violent when I was a kid. When I was around 5 years old we were at my grandma's house and it was around Eid time. Muslim holiday. In Eid time the children kiss the hands of adults out of respect and the adults give them pocket money or sweets. My mom said I came up to my grandpa kissed his hand and then put my hand out and he handed me a little coin. My mom said I gave him a scolding disappointed face. She said I turned around and started walking away then I suddenly turned around and ninja starred the coin right into my grandpa's face. He got hit just under his eyes and he got a little scar. To this day he doesn't let it go. When he sees me with a coin or any money for that matter he goes wow man drop the coin no one needs to get hurt my grandpa is 87 and the strongest man I know. I love that he still teases you about it. That is just what would happen in my family. My brother was in high school when I realized that he is in butthole. I met a boy who attended the same school and asked him if he knew my brother. His face got really red and he proceeded to tell me that my brother was the school's biggest bully. He always picked on this boy for being fat. I find some comfort in the fact that my little brother is now over 300 pounds. I wish I could tell that nice young man. Too bad that my brother is still in butthole. Something similar happened at my school my cousin is pretty overweight and I was talking to my then girlfriend about this kid that kept bullying him. She got all quiet and said that's my brother the next day she went and beat up her brother in front of the whole school. My younger sister may be in butthole. She was 3 at the time. Very clever. And probably the most fearless kid I have ever seen. She comes out of the kitchen with a cup of water she fixed herself. Dumps it on my mother. And yells at her to go away. As my mother is laughing my little sis runs into the master bedroom and locks the door. Then proceeds to eat all the chocolate. Unfortunately after previous door locking incidents she had figured out to take the screwdriver with her. Once we finally give up trying to get in and wait for her to come out. Hearing her trash the place the entire time. She chills for about a half hour and sneaks out. Immediately proceeding to my younger brother's room where she trashes the place. Lego structures destroyed. Fish tank flipped, and she somehow turned the chair over. We finally got to her as she was slamming the door repeatedly yelling I don't care. Jesus. Christ, if I'd done that at any age my parents would still be in prison for murder. Not a parent but an older sister. My 8 year old brother, we'll call him Jack, really hates this kid in his class. We'll call the other kid Bill. A few weeks ago, Jack took a sharpie to school and asked to be excused to the bathroom. He wrote on the wall Frick, written by Bill. Of course, a teacher saw him and called both boys into the principal's office to see how things played out. Of course, Jack tried to throw Bill under the bus and threw a huge tantrum when he got caught in his lie. I've been getting a lot of replies with speculations that he is seriously troubled. And he is. It's relevant that he is adopted. Not even fully adopted yet. Actually, and has had a pretty traumatic past. He is in counseling, and we're working hard to undo all of the damage that was done to him by his birth parents. When at 13 years old he refused to admit that he had eaten the box of chocolate I bought for my friend and left out on the counter. His great idea for explaining the melted chocolate all over his face. He got curious and ate his own crap. I kept asking him if that was the story he was sticking with and he kept screaming. I just wanted to see what it tasted like. Me. Your own crap him. Yay why don't you believe me his dad comes home and asks him where he got the crap from. He gets angrier and angrier at the suggestion that he fished it out of his own ruse or the toilet. My husband finally leans forward and asks him, son is it even your own crap? That set him off into a rage of why he would eat someone else's crap. I laughed until I cried. To this day he is angry that I made him replace the box of chocolate. Not a parent, but I was a teacher. And I have to say, some kids really are buttholes. I once tried to teach my third graders to resolve conflicts between themselves before complaining to me about it. I was tired of he's bugging me complaints. I talked to them about ways to politely ask someone who's annoying you to stop whatever annoying thing they're doing. And how to respond politely if you're the one being asked to stop. I couched it as a first step. Try to solve your own problems before coming to me about it. Moments after this lesson, the kids are at work reading silently, and a girl raises her hand. Lo and behold, it's Richard is bothering me. 
he won't stop kicking her under the desk. Did she ask him to stop? As I'd instructed? Yep. His response? The teacher said you have to solve your own problem. My grandma came to visit one summer and while my parents were at work she would watch us. My sister that was about 4 at the time didn't like my grandma around since she would not let us eat candy while my parents weren't home. My sister would ask her grandma when are you leaving back to your house grandma would say in a couple weeks and my sister responded. Good because we don't want you in our house. The day he turned 28, was still living at home, had a part time job, and I paid for the engagement ring for his girlfriend, just so he'd get married and finally leave home. Hugh. All that in one sentence. The joke is on you. She's moving in. I'm a parent of a 20 year old son. I had him young and raised him on my own. While he is not in butthole in general. In fact he is a very thoughtful, quiet, shy type of young man. He did have a serious enough problem with smoking weed that it caused unlivable friction between us. I am not a puritan or a hard as parent. I am still young enough to remember my party times. I smoked pot when I was a teen. Drank. Did plenty of other drugs too. So I had no issue with him experimenting and experiencing things. It became an issue though when he graduated high school. Changed his long time plans of enlisting in the navy and informed me that he was going to take a year or two to chill and find himself. I am not rich. I raised him solo with a deadbeat mom who never paid a dime in support until he was 18. So I informed him that he was most certainly not going to lay around my house, eating my food, and smoking pot every freaking day while I busted my butt to keep the roof over our heads. I gave him 2 months to take a break from the weed, clean his system and get a job to help contribute to the house or else he'd have to move out. He didn't take me serious enough and continued living the happy stoner life. At the end of 2 months he came traipsing in the house one afternoon and I asked him if he had a job. He stared blankly for a long minute and mumbled no. I told him very well, get your stuff together and be out by midnight. Then he realized I had been serious. Too late. I made him leave. He had several months of couch surfing his friends places until his mother begrudgingly let him move in with her. He was mad at me for a long time but tough crap. He was being selfish and butthole at that point and he needed to learn how the real world works. If he couldn't stop messing with the pot even just long enough to find work and contribute to the household, he wasn't going to have a stoner's life of leisure at my expense. It was a hard lesson for me to teach him but he learned it. My niece told my daughter that we would abandon her after we emigrated. A few nights before we flew out she said after you get there and you've left the airport. They'll stop the car and leave you on the side of the road. My niece was 9, daughter was 5, and she only told me about it a few weeks after we arrived. I hate to think of the anxiety. We were in the car going to eat Mexican food. My 10 year old son asked why we weren't eating at Chick-fil-A. I explained that he wasn't always going to get exactly what he wanted. He replies I already know that. That's why you're bad parents. He doesn't know it yet. But that's why you're good parents. I thought my little sister was pretty sweet. But one day she was sent home from school. Kindergarten. With a note explaining that she had punched another little girl in the stomach and said that it was because she was fat. When we were little, my family would spend holidays at my grandparents house. One Easter, we died and decorated the eggs and they were hidden the next morning all around the property. I found an egg that my older cousin had done that said in big letters, Frick the Easter Bunny. My baby sister, when she, a year after my older sister accidentally burned her with a curling iron, handed my older sister an on curling iron hot part first and when she grabbed it and screamed looked at her with all the evil in the world behind her arm and eyes and asked, feigning concern, oh it burns. It really burns then smiled. She was about 6. She also used to lie to my father about me having hurt her so he would spank me. She can hold a grudge I'll tell you that. My goddaughter is in butthole. My best friend had her when we were 19. And of course daddy took off. She literally had to hunt him down for child support turns out he had two other kids with two other baby mamas. If a lesson should ever have been learned, this was it. But I digress. This kid is 10 now and doesn't have any other kid friends. She has to take Ritalin before school or the teachers refuse to keep her in class. If she doesn't take her meds, 
She does things like says your face is. Insert randomized critique here like ugly. Destroyed. ETC. Or burn if another member of the family says something witty. At first it was funny. Then her mom told me about some things she was doing. She used a steak knife to carve into their new kitchen cabinets when she got mad for being grounded. Between the time it took her mother to go out to the car and back inside, she had stolen cash from her purse. She lied about everything even when someone watched her do something bad. I love her, but I don't really like her. When my daughter grabs me by the collar of my shirt and blows raspberries into my face, getting spit all over me, makes it worst when you are getting bullied by someone who doesn't wear pants. She's 10 months. I'm 18 years old and I still do that to my mum. I lie and say I'm going to kiss her cheek and blow the wettest raspberry on her cheek. So worth her licking her hand and smaking me. Not a parent. But the moment I knew for sure that my nephew was a butthole was one night when I was at my brother's house while his neighbor, who was a mechanic, was working on my car. It was getting late as he finished it and I was hanging at my brother's with his wife and her 9 year old son. He was from a prior relationship. My brother had to get up early for work the next day so he went to bed while I watched TV. His wife was reading a magazine and the boy was running around like a wild child. Riding his scooter and being loud and obnoxious. It was about 10.30pm. His mom tells him to stop riding his scooter in the house and he stops. Looks her in the eye and says, you're not the boss of me. And continues to do it. A few minutes later he asked her for Oreo cookies. She told him she wasn't giving him Oreos this late at night. He walked over to her. Got right in her face and said through clenched teeth. Aureus, right now and he pointed to the kitchen. My jaw hit the floor when she stood up, went and got them for him. When she brought them back he took them, sat down on the floor then as he took the first bit he said to her, you should have listened the first time. I nearly crap myself. My brother and her are now divorced, but to this day the boy, who is now 20, is still a raging butthole who has never had a job, has no respect for anyone and is constantly in trouble with the law because he can't figure out why he can't just do whatever he wants. Not the parent in this scenario, but my boyfriend told me that when he was a kid, he was rollerblading around the neighborhood with his buddy. The buddy fell down. So my boyfriend kicked him really hard with his rollerblade clad foot as punishment for sucking at rollerblading. I'm not the parent, but I'm the sibling. The sibling who watched my brother spit in my mom's face while she was on the phone with the school principal dealing with whatever trouble he had been in that week. My brother's now a felony or two away from prison. I'm surprised he has been able to keep his job, if he still even has one. All kids are buttholes, because they are inherently selfish. I have two boys, aged 9 and 6. They would lie, cheat, steal and then lie with straight faces about the cheating and stealing. It's my job as a parent to teach them not to be buttholes, to be mindful of other people, to be honest and to be self-aware enough to understand when they are in the wrong. They are a work in progress. Good job on trying. It's hard but worth it. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.